Good afternoon, Floss Tube. It is May 5th, Cinco de Mayo here in the state of Texas, and a beautiful sunny day here in the Dallas area. I have been looking forward to coming back to see you and have just put off making the video because of things cropping up around our home and at work and you know how excuses go but I'm very happy to be here today so much to share I know that everyone is posting stitch mania progress and of course a week ago it was stitch mania plans after my attempt last year at doing mania I decided not to worry about it this year ultimately my stitching is for pleasure and whatever calls to me is what I am going to stitch. But I did spend some time thinking about the four, maybe five projects that will be getting my attention in May, and we want to talk about that today. I also have a book that I finished that I would be happy to recommend, and I also want to share briefly an article that a co-worker gave me that talks about all the benefits of our delightful craft. So hopefully I'll remember to share all of that today. So that I won't forget, I want to show the stash that my husband acquired. Sadly, I came upon this on our dining room table one day after work, he had forgotten that he left it on the dining room table, and these were supposed to be Mother's Day gifts. So I found my Mother's Day gifts early, but the good thing about that is I have already started one of them. You know how that goes. So let me show you these two very old kits. They are from Delta Needlecraft, and this was a store or a designer in New Orleans back in the 70s it looks like so it comes very simply packaged this particular graph is going to be the antebellum home long view which is in Natchez Mississippi we have seen this home and this was the one excuse me long wood oh, I've lived in this state my whole life and I can't remember Longwood. This was the beautiful home built in 1858 that was never completed. So when you tour, you see the downstairs furnished and so forth. The rest was never finished. But if you can look at the picture again, you see that it would have been a three-story home with a cupola, 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 I believe it's called, which is this part up here. So these kits include a very beautiful Ada, and I'm going to show you the one in the other package, along with your threads. And as I said, it's a very old kit, but you know how much we love historic architecture and stitching the things that are um, important to us or that we have seen on our travels. And since we are from the state of Mississippi, these are very special to us. And this second one, is the one that I just started a couple of days ago, and it's called Montaigne. It was built in 1855, and as you can see, it's set up the same way. These are five by seven, so they are not going to be that large. And people, this is another one of those relaxing stitches because there are blocks of color, just like when I did St. Paul Cathedral, and let me show you my progress. And this was simply working a couple of days, not very long. I hope our lighting is not going to be a problem because it's getting late here. But you can see that I've done all the sky to the trees. This is going to be a big tree here. This will be another tree here. And I want you to see this Ada because it is super soft. I did not wash it or do anything. I took it straight out of the kit. And it is so nice to stitch sewing style. So I have been doing this sewing style and I've gotten this much done. So it will be this wide 
and probably, I haven't measured the five, probably going to go to about right here. And it's just one of those relaxing stitches that does not tax your brain when you are tired and don't want to count a lot. So you can see how they have packaged, excuse me, that was not even in the frame, how they have packaged the threads. And I'm trying very hard to keep up with the colors and not get confused. <clears throat> and then this was a whole skein of this DMC color for the sky. And you separate two strands of floss for this um, particular graph. So Delta Needlework and Needlecraft, Delta Needlecraft from New Orleans. Probably no longer there, but oh, how much fun I have had with my antique Mother's Day kit of my beautiful Annabelle homes in our home state. Now, the next thing that has taken most of my time, I want to talk a lot about today because you all know that I received Rosewood Manor's Summer Quakers for my birthday. And I had asked a lot of you to share with me any advice you had about Rosewood Manor and also the Valdani threads. And I did receive several comments from sweet listeners who told me a little bit about using the threads and about stitching Rosewood Manor. But I want to tell you, and you can see how nicely organized these Daiso bags make things. This has been an addicting stitch. Number one, I love the Valdani threads. I want to show them to you. They're not as pretty as they were when I first received them, of course, because I'm using them. But it comes in this box. These, were, these are made in Romania, which fascinates me. But I want to show you so that you will know if you have not stitched with these that there is no separating to this. Oops, I dropped that. You just stitch with this three ply, put that in your needle and go, which is wonderful. It saves so much time. Let me see if I can pick this up and show you again. So this beautiful color is called JP12. I wanna show you the sweet little that upside down there we go sweet little label on the inside and so each little color has these little balls this little skein now I have messed that one up but oh they are so nice now a listener said to use a little bit shorter length than you normally would which I have and I have not had any trouble with tangling look at the beautiful pink and the variegation on these is amazing. Look at this one. The pinks and purples, can you see that? Oh, our lighting is going to be a challenge, I'm so sorry. So, threads, A+, plus. love them so much. Graph, also A+, plus. I applaud. It's Karen Kluba who designs these. And I'll show you this, just in case you're new. If you are new, welcome. So these are such that each little motif is a finish. And she suggests that you do section one, section two, section three, and so forth. And then you do across the bottom. And so I have tried to do that. And you know that I am stitching this along with a friend long distance. And so we are sending each other pictures and uh, encouraging each other to press forward in this. So let me show you how far I have gotten. And I am just oh so thrilled. I would not have put this down had I not stumbled on my historic architecture piece. So I've got to get back to this. This is section one. And I want you to notice if you can see, oh, please let us have a little bit of good light. Let me turn this a bit. I may have to turn on another light, people. 
but if you can see this is almost all of section one this motif on the bottom I am not finished with all the little green leaves that fill in here there may be a few small flowers but the pot is finished as well as all the stems and branches these two flowers are done with that same beautiful variegated thread and you can see beautiful variegation here guys i'm going to put this down i'm going to walk away to turn on a better light i'll be right back i hope it helps so sorry that may or may not help you should not film at dusk oh yes i think that may help a bit okay but i do want you to see up close the beautiful variegation of this When I film again with this piece, I'll try to do it early in the day and get an up close for you. You cannot appreciate this if you don't see the colors. So we're doing one piece of the Valdani, which is three ply, over two. This is a 28 count, I believe, linen. And let me just show you again how big this is going to be so you get an idea of the piece itself. And you know I fell in love with the beautiful hand dyed fabric which I've never used before. So I'm not showing you to its best advantage but at least you know how far I've gotten and how much I've enjoyed it. The other secret I believe, and another sweet listener told me this, is to have your floss organized such that when you have so many color changes, you can put one needle down and pick up another. So, Paco, thread organizer, all my symbols, all my threads. Looks like I'm missing one, two needles. And then this one is a black, the DMC 310, I believe, that you do use. That's the only DMC color you use. This has saved so much time. So thank you to that dear listener who suggested that. And I want to give her credit. I am having a brain freeze right now, but I will do my best to share that next time. So if you don't have one of these, whatever it takes to keep your needles threaded and ready so that you can put this one back and pick up this one and so forth. So if you've never done Rosewood Manor or Valdani threads, I say go for it. Oh my goodness, it is just more fun than I can express. You know that I had chosen a different fabric for my Moira Blackburn sampler, which came home with me from Scotland. Now we're getting light, good grief. And so this one has not received much love in the last few weeks, but I did want to show you where I had stopped. Let me move this needle so that you don't have to look at that. So this is the bottom, the bottom part of the sampler. And this is another one. When I changed the fabric and started this again, I felt head over heels in love with it again. And you can see we have the door and then part of the alphabet underneath, the little heart motifs. I love the flower section. And then there's a lowercase alphabet underneath. Those were such fun to stitch. And then we're going to have my name or my first name and last name and the year it was stitched goes in that box. So I really want to get back to this during Mania. I guess I am participating if I'm doing three or four projects. So this piece will be this big. I'm sorry, I bought double the fabric. So not as big as some. And I'm loving the way the colors show up on this. It just makes it look almost like a reproduction sampler, but still a modern sampler. Now this yellow that's stitched inside the middle box here was not supposed to be yellow. 
I misread the symbol. It's supposed to be a darker green or blue. It's supposed to be the blue. But you know, I'm gonna leave it. I actually like the way it pops. And I'm not ripping that out. Those stitches were nicely put in. <laughs> so this is Bothy Threads, the only Bothy Threads kit I have ever done. And oh, I can't wait to get to the pink house. So that has been a lot of fun. And then the other project that will have to be a part of Mania will be Mary, Queen of Scots. Poor Mary has been put in the drawer and ignored now for a month, and I'll tell you exactly why. I love the red I chose. I love the linen, but I was tired of stitching red in spring. I needed all these beautiful colors that I have brought into my rotation that I had not gotten from Mary, but I cannot let her waste away. We want her finished, so I'm going to pull her out next week. I'm going to pull her out at least a couple of nights during the week. There was a section I really wanted to work on, and I think that will be a good way to get back into Mary. I just needed the spring colors and the little bit of a change from red, 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 which I was tired of. Okay, let me first say that this article that my coworker shared with me is from, I believe, a blog or maybe a website called betterhumans.coach.me. I don't know anything about this except that she reads this publication and she shared the article with me. It is written by Gloria Wickham and it's called How Cross-Stitching Developed My Creativity and Self-Discipline. And there are pages and pages of this article where she talks about how she learned, what she stitched, but most importantly, why she's continuing to stitch. And it's what we know, but I like to have it reinforced. It is a calming, almost meditative practice, very similar to knitting or meditation of some sorts, but it also helps us to focus more carefully, to have enough self-discipline to complete a project, and then develop patience as we watch the project com become completed over a long period of time. And she just suggests that any needle craft is good for de-stressing at the end of a long day, but she gives us a little quote from Journal of Neuropsychiatry and another from Clinical Neurosciences that talks about what goes on in our brains when we are doing this kind of craft. So I'm like, huh, we know it's wonderful, but now we know scientifically why it's wonderful. So if you can access that, it is betterhumans.coach.me and then how cross-stitching developed my creativity and self-discipline. I commend it to you. I printed it, although I normally will read things offline, and I believe this is a pattern she developed off the internet that she was working on. But I just love to be encouraged and reinforced uh, for the time and money that we spend on this hobby. So a fun article, which I have not done a very good job of summarizing, but I wanted to share that with you. Then lastly, I don't know how much of this you'll be able to see, but one of my favorite books as a teenager was my Antonia by Willa Cather. And I ordered the audiobook from my public library and I thought, I need to listen to this again. I could not remember the story. There are some sections that are difficult, I will admit. And I guess I had forgotten those sections, but let me commend this to you. If you are interested in the history of our country here in the United States, in what happened to those immigrants who came over during the 1800s, I believe, 
And this one particularly is about a woman named Antonina and her family and her friends in Nebraska in this time of development of our country. And this author who did win the Pulitzer Prize, but I believe it was for O Pioneers, not this book, again develops amazing characters and goes back into that history as if you have walked back there with her. You feel that you are in those characters' lives. You're going through their hardships and their triumphs. And this character, Antonia, is a perfect example of a strong, resilient young girl who becomes a strong and resilient young woman. And you follow her until the not the end of her life, but until her adulthood and her own family and the young man who is her friend who narrates the story takes you through those years as they grow up together and then as he revisits her at a point in their older years. So if you have not read Willa Cather, this would be a great place to start. Be prepared for a couple of less than pleasant scenes, but I'm sure many things such as these happened in those days. We all know the struggles these immigrants went through. Probably um, if you are from that area of the Midwest, you would even know more of this history than I would know, but I commend it. And it is a classic that you would spend your time on with much payoff. If you have not visited with me before, my name is Sharon. This channel is called Magnolia Nana because I am a woman of the South and love the flower, the magnolia, and because I am a Nana. And uh, we are awaiting the birth of another precious granddaughter any day now. And living in the great state of Texas now after having lived in Mississippi and Louisiana being from the state of Mississippi and so come visit me again I love to share my passion for cross stitch but I also have to throw in a new book that I've read or a book that I want to read because I work at a library and I am an educator my whole life so books and education are very important to me. So if any of that appeals to you, come back to see me. Please subscribe if you like what you see and I will update you as I have progress to show you. Hopefully that will not be quite as long as it has been before. Uh, you will notice that I don't always share work that everyone is doing. I often We'll pull out something that I've had in my stash forever, or we might find an old pattern that we like and that I want to do. You will also find that I have a million whips, maybe not a million, but a lot, and I do not apologize for that. At my age, if I like it, I'm going to stitch it. If I get tired of it, I'm going to put it away and pull out something else that I like because at the end of a long work day, it is my relaxation and my therapy. Primarily, I stitch for our home, but also for the homes of my children and grandchildren. Well, their little rooms, they don't have their own homes yet. And also love to gift my work when I can. So share with me what you love to stitch right now and what you like to do with your stitching when it is finished. Take care, have a wonderful second week of May, keep posting your mania fun, and I look forward to catching up with many of you, and thank you for your time today. See you soon.